everybody, I am inside this gorgeous chapel, the sacred chapel um, of the Columban Fathers. Uh, it's in Galgan Park, which is about an hour away from Dublin. I am here with very three extremely special um, people. They are three Columban Fathers who served in Korea as missionaries for I mean, combined, three of them combined more than a hundred years because, I mean, Father O'Brien, who were there for how many years? 50. <laughs> Father O'Brien was there for 50 years. 25. 25 and? 57 years. 57 wow. years. <laughs> he, they, well, for sure, they lived in Korea longer than they lived in Ireland. Um, so thank you so much for your service. So Cullum and Fathers were, oh, you tell us, um, when they were they first in Korea? 1933. 1933, and everybody, 1933 was still when um, it, Korea was under Japanese um, colonial rule. 1945, Korea was liberated, gained independence, but that's when um, there were two differing sides uh, to communism versus um, democracy. And as we all know, in 1950, June 25th, uh, the Korean War broke out. And when the Korean War broke out, approximately how many Columban fathers do you think were there at that time? Uh, about 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Uh, uh, Well, yes, about 20, 30, and very sadly and tragically, seven who had an opportunity to flee chose to remain, right? Yeah. And right. were very sadly killed and martyred. So here we are inside this chapel because there are, they are here, memorialized here. Can you point them out? Monsignor Patrick Brennan here, Thomas Cusick, John O'Brien, Tony Collier, Patrick Riley. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and maybe... And then we have James McGinn and Frank Canavan. Yes. Frank mm. Canavan was taken up North Korea mm. and died in North Korea. Mm. He was taken up with two other Colombian priests. There were mm. three of them taken over the border up to North Korea. He died in North Korea. So mm. his remains would still be in North Korea. Oh! <gasps> he was on the death prisoner march. Of war. I mean, he was on the prisoner of war. On the death march. Oh, but you've said something. Oh my God! Yes, they all can see that. But Chugume Hengjon, Chugume Hengjon. Oh my! Actually, okay, you said something that really. So you're right. Two of those who died in North Korea. Their remains were never found. One. Just one. one. Just one. one. Just Frank Kennebec. Frank Kennebec. So the remains were never recovered. He was His very young. His remains were never recovered. No, very young. No, he was only 40. Oh my, that breaks my heart because, um, because of the current situation um, between North and South Korea, um, there are at least, oh, there are still about 7,000 remains unaccounted for, okay, mm -hmm. veterans unaccounted for in America. But fa are... Father and, and James Magan would be one of many across Also, the... these are unaccounted for. They're buried in a common grave They're in Taejong. Taejong, those oh. three. One, Martin, two, Martin three. And Taejong. Oh. But their bodies, there's no graves, we don't in know. Taejong. we don't know where the graves are. Oh, but oh, the yeah. others, where are they buried? They're buried in Chun Chun. They're buried in Chun Chun. Oh my god. Three of them in Chun Chun, Kongwanda. So they never really physically found the body. made it. No, 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 even they're not even buried in their homelands. That's oh, right. no. oh no, no. Buried in Korea. <laughs> in Korea somewhere. <laughs> that breaks my heart. Ah, that breaks my heart. Oh. 
Well, I am very glad I came to Dangyeon Park on their behalf. Um, although it's not their hometown, I know they all left. They were trained here, right? And they left from here and ordained, of course, from here, right? right. And they, I, they were only 35 at the time when they went to Korea and... and they died. They could have left Korea. Left 35. They could so, have left Korea, but they stayed in Korea. Yes. They stayed with the and people. And that is actually um, many of the veteran stories. They didn't have to go. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to serve, yet they chose to. And I guess in a very, very weird way, I completely understand because um, when I started, <laughs> when I started, you know, doing this, visiting veterans. Honestly, I thought I would do it once around the world and that would be it. That would, um, that would actually fulfill my promise to God and myself and to just this universe that I, that I would do it. But the reason why I did it again and across America, did it again across the Pacific and doing it again now is because I choose to. I choose to, it's not even, I feel obligated to, it's not even that anymore. It's, I choose to because I want to. And I think all three of you as missionaries, um, they, what they said was, cause you know, I think that for their service and they said they actually gained more from serving than, um, you know, than, go, than going there, you know, so. Thank you so much to the three of you fathers for your service, to, you know, just the people of Korea and to this world, you know, to take love, to, to spread a message of hope and peace and love. So everybody, um, wow, this is just only my second day and I am just overwhelmed with so much just so much emotion and gratitude. So thank you, everybody. Continue you. to follow me. Tomorrow's a big day also at the Mayo Peace Park. Um, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.